Hello there and welcome back to another episode of our Lumina Neo Academy. The show where we help you to get the most out of this photo editing application. Now, if you've never been here before, my name is Jacob Bors and I'm a creator and founder here at Clever Photographer. Now, before we're going to start, I have a few things I want to cover. First of all, at the end of the video, I'm going to give you access to our popular Luminar Neo shortcut cheat sheet. So you make sure that you stay until the end. Also, if you don't own Luminar Neo or the HDR Merge plugin, get our discount code to get the best possible price and you can find it in the description of this video. Finally, I would like to ask you to please like, comment and share on this video. And also don't forget to subscribe to our channel so we can keep creating content like this. The masking feature is an essential part of Luminar Neo. It can be used on almost all tools and it gives you countless creative possibilities. In today's tutorial, I will give you seven tips to help you to get the most out of Luminar Neo and to mask like a pro. So as you can see, we are already in Luminar Neo, the catalog module, and here goes the sample file we're going to be working on. Simply select it and let's move it into edit module by clicking on edit on the top of the screen or using E on our keyboard. After this, let's quickly jump into our main toolbar, into the essential section and open the black and white tool. To follow, click on convert to black and white. And the reason why we're going to do this is that the black and white tool and the black and white filter works very well for examples of masking. To start, we're going to go into the masking tab and the first set of tips are focusing on brush. So let's open brush and let's start by clicking on paint and simply just paint one line. After this, you can see we have back our colorful image and we just have one line of black and white here. So now whatever we're going to be doing, you will clearly see with the black and white on the image. So starting with the tip number one, and that's how to make a straight line. To do this, all you need to do, you need to click on start of your line. So let's say we click here and then you need to hold shift on your keyboard and click on the end of the line. So let's say that I want to make a line from here all the way here. Once I'm holding a shift on my keyboard, I just click again and now it's going to make a straight line between two of these points. So to make a straight line, once again, one click at the beginning, hold shift on my keyboard, another click, and that's how you make straight line with the brush tool. After this, the next thing I want to show you is how you can quickly swap between paint and erase. To do this, once again, we're going to be using keyboard and all you need to do is to hit X on your keyboard. So right now we are painting and when I hit X, it will switch to erase. So now I can go ahead and start to erase part of the mask. Again, you can see there is more here and you can just erase it like this. If I want to paint the mask again, I hit X again and I'm back to paint. And now I can go and select the mask wherever I want. So this is a faster way than going with your mouse back and forward to the masking tool. Moving to the next tip and still staying with the brush tool. When we zoom in and you can do that with your command or control plus on the keyboard. Now to move around the image while you have your brush selected, you need to hold spacebar on your keyboard. So let's say that I start selecting here. I start masking here and now I need to move here towards right. So to do this, just hold spacebar. Your mouse will change into the hand and now you can move around your screen. After that, you can just continue masking this part of the image. Now moving on the tip number four, let's just move up on our image more closer to the mountains. And what I want to show you is how to do a fine selection. Let's zoom even closer and again, use our space bar to navigate towards the rock. Now let's say that we want to select the rock. Now looking at our brush, this is too soft. 
So when I try to select it, you will see that we get the glow outside of the rock. Many people would now go into their brush, take the softness all the way down to zero and start to select the rock. However, that is a mistake. In nature, there is no such thing as zero softness because there is always a little bit of light and color leak. What you want to do on your softness, you actually want to select somewhere around 10 or 15. After that, it will be still quite sharp, but it will be much closer to reality. So when you're making fine selection, always make sure that your softness is somewhere around 10 or 50. If you go all the way to zero on your softness slider, you will see that your result will look like you have cut it with the scissors. Now we are done with the brush tool. So let's go back, let's zoom out. And first of all, let's just clear our mask again. For this, we're gonna go into the mask actions and click on clear. For now, we are done with the black and white tool so we can close it. And for the next example, we're gonna scroll all the way down to the bottom of our main toolbar and open the super contrast tool. Before we continue, I would like to remind you that our Luminar Neo power bundle is powering this tutorial. This bundle is specially designed for use with Luminar Neo and contain over 986 new elements that can help you to create stunning images. By purchasing it today, you will receive professional skies, overlays, textures, backgrounds, LUTs and presets. To take an advantage of the best possible price, click the link in the description. And for more information, please visit our website cleverphotographer.com. With the next tip, I want to show you how you can combine different masking tools. So first of all, let's add some highlights contrast and we can do that with a little slider here. So let's just increase it. And also let's add some mid-tones contrast. And again, we can do it with the mid-tones contrast slider. After this, the next thing we want to do is we want to only apply this to the sky and to the foreground. So let's go back into our tool, select the masking, and let's start by going into the mask AI. The application will scan the image and then it will give us a choice of elements that we can select it on the image. Now looking at it, you can see that we have a sky, flora, mountains and natural ground. So since we want to select the sky, we're going to click on sky. It takes just a second. And as you can see, it did pretty good job selecting the sky. Once we finish here, we can come back and have a look at the result. Let's check the before and after. And you can see that now we have added the contrast into our sky. However, as I mentioned, I would like to add contrast also into the foreground. So for this, we can choose any other tools, but for example, let's go for the linear gradient. Click on it to open it, and now we can just paint it on our image. Follow the instruction to click and drag the gradient, and let's just select our foreground here. Once we're happy, we can adjust it a little bit, and once it's all finished, we can come back to our tool, click on back, and now we have the sky and the foreground selected. Again, let's see the mask. And to do this, we can go into mask actions, click on show, and you can see the mask now. So you can combine any of the masking tools. You can use the brush, linear gradient, radial gradient, or mask AI to add or remove parts of the mask. For the next tip, we're gonna now hide the mask and let's say that we wanna enhance exactly the same areas. We wanna use the enhance tool to enhance the sky and the foreground. In order to avoid the need of selecting both of them again, you can copy and paste the mask. To do this, once we're here, still on the super contrast tool, Again, we're going to go into the mask actions, click on copy, and now we can close the tool, 
go all the way to the top of our tool, open the Enhance AI, and first of all, start by increasing the Accent AI slider. So let's do that. Let's increase it until we like the result. Of course, that we keep an eye on our sky and the foreground. And once we're happy, we can again select Masking, go into the Mask Actions, and here click on Paste. Once we do that, we can again click on Show, which will confirm that we have the same mask applied to this tool. We can hide it and we can see how we have enhanced the sky and the foreground. Again, you can check the before and after. And if you want, you can come back to the adjustments and increase the Accent AI even further. And finally, for the tip number seven, we can close the Enhance AI and go into the landscape tool. Here, increase the golden hour slider until you see a really nice, strong, warm glow. Once we're done here, we can jump into the masking. And for this tip, we're gonna be using the radial gradient. Click on it to open it. And first of all, start by painting the gradient in this part of the image. Once you have it painted, you can adjust it a little bit and move it around. Once you do that, you will notice that the center of the gradient is empty. And then by gradient coming all the way outside of the circle, now we have the full mask. However, we would like the opposite. We would like to add the glow and a warmth from the landscape tool only in a center of the gradient. And to do this, we can come back to our masking and simply click on invert. After that, we can still come back and adjust the position of the gradient. When we're happy, we can come back and then go into the adjustments. Here, we can add even more on the golden hour slider. And once we're happy, we can just close it. So the invert option on the radial gradient is a great way how you can point the effect to the specific area of your image. And there you have it. If you want a copy of our popular Luminar Neo shortcut cheat sheet, there is nothing easier than heading to our website cleverphotographer.com slash Luminar Give. While you're there, you can also check out one of our popular Luminar Neo products, or you can stay here and watch more videos about Luminar Neo. For today, I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did, please make sure that you like, comment, and share on this video. And also, don't forget to subscribe to our channel so we can keep creating content like this. For today, thank you very much for watching. My name is Jacob Bors, and I can't wait to see you in the next video. Yeah.